unidentified flying objects. Are they proof that we are being visited by civilizations from other stars? Or just what are they? What the devil have you got to say for yourself? I'm sorry, sir, but I lost it. Lady, that's not all you lost. You just blew your career. He's been here for a few weeks now. Do you think he's changed? Oh, yeah. He's really mellowed out. Regular pussycat now. Do you think so? No doubt about it. Well, I guess you ought to know. You're around him more than I am. Oh, yeah. We get along like two coats of paint. Wasn't sure there for a while, though. I know what you mean. I never will forget the first day he walked through that door. help you, Captain. I hope you can help me a great deal, Sergeant. I'm Captain Ryan. How do you do, sir? This is Libby Verdon. Miss Verdon? I'm happy to know you, sir, and my name is Libby. I know it is, Miss Verdon. That my office? Yes, sir. Will you bring in file 12,008? And Miss Verdon, I'd like a cup of coffee, please. Small cube of sugar, one ounce of milk. Always. Is 12,008 the foul? Uh... The female pile at Colorado Springs. Thank you, Sergeant. Any opinion on this? I certainly think it's worth an investigation, sir. Why? 
Seems to me Miss Galloway's a fairly qualified observer. Several hundred hours in the air. Captain Moran's also a qualified observer. Several thousand in the air. He didn't see a thing. I believe those circumstances were explained, sir. Miss Verdon, you brewed this coffee about 0900 hours? Almost exactly then, yes, sir. After two hours, the oils and coffee begin to congeal. It's not the bitter taste as much as it's bad for the duodenum. From now on, make as much as necessary, but make it more often. Yes, sir. So you accept Miss Galloway's explanation of why she was the only witness? Seems reasonable. Visibility from the back seat is so poor. Did you read her personnel file from Pikes Peak College? Yes, sir. I studied it very carefully. So Kay Galloway's statement is impressive enough for you to recommend that we spend the taxpayers' monies investigating her story? Especially when the security risks are considered. It being a restricted flight over a military operating area. No red, and aerospace defense command right there. I do too, Sergeant. It's difficult to see from the back seat of a T-34. I've been there a few times. And that girl's statement sounds honest. In that case, sir, I did put a hold on two seats on a Max C-141 to Denver. Departure time not definite. I checked with base ops. We can take off as soon as you're ready. It'll take me about 20 minutes, sir, to throw some things in the B-4 bag. I'm quartered here at the base, sir. You don't keep a bag here packed and ready? Uh, no, sir. I will from now on, sir. Thank you. Meet you at base ops in 45 minutes. I can make it 30 minutes total, sir. When will you get a haircut? Yes, sir. On the way, Liv. See you sometime. Hey, Harry. I'm in a hurry. It has been a tradition at Pikes Peak College since its founding that the students maintain their own disciplinary boards, a tradition maintained through many social changes, including the admission of women. The cornerstone of a student's code of honor is his honesty and integrity. Telling the truth about an act is as important as the act itself. This hearing is formally open. For the record, the Pikes Peak College Honor Board has been convened to consider the case of Miss Kay Galloway, member of the senior class, accused of making a false report in regard to a federal statute, namely, violating restricted airspace over certain U.S. government installations in and around Colorado Springs, Colorado. Miss Galloway, would you care to make a statement? Yes, of course I would. <sighs> Last Thursday, April 4th, the second day of spring break, as a member of the College Aviation Society, I was scheduled for a check flight in the T-34 by an FAA-certified check pilot, Captain Frederick Moran, from Colby Air Base. Miss Galloway, I believe I'm the only member of this board who is not a member of the Aviation Society. I'd just like to ask what experience you've had in the air. I have more than 300 hours. The courses I've taken here for credit include Navigation and meteorology. You transferred here as a junior, didn't you? Yes, Mr. Higby. My junior year. From? The Air Force Academy. Just why did you leave, Miss Galloway? I resigned. The details of your resignation may become germane, and if we decide they are, we'll get into them. Please go on. I met Captain Moran at the flight line. Morning, Galloway. Morning, sir. You all set? I think so, sir. Did you uh, happen to check the weather? Certainly, Captain. Pressure is 30.04, dropping, high scattered, visibility 40 miles. What's known as a nice day to go up into the wild blue yonder. Let's do it. Galloway, how'd you manage to build up so many hours? You have more than anybody in college, haven't you? Well, my father was a pilot. Oh, really? What did he fly? P-51, in olden days. He taught me to solo in a steerman. Where is he now? He was doing some bush pilot work up in Alaska. Crashed flying medicine into a little town during a snowstorm. I'm sorry. You interested in making flying a career? Not interested. Determined. Someday I'm going to be a commercial pilot. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking, not your stewardess. Good luck, Galloway. Fight the battle. 
I will, sir. November 311 Hotel. You're cleared to the outer ramp from present position to runway 3535. Cleared to taxi. Hold clear of the active. Over. Uh, Roger, Kobe, in 311H, out of the chocks. Traction. We milk the flaps only after climb speed and aircraft altitude are established. Climb power is set. We keep the aircraft trimmed constantly for as nearly a hands-off flight as possible. You keep track of your instruments and what's going on outside the aircraft. A mid-air collision can just ruin your whole day. Yes, sir. November 311 Hotel, cleared to take off. Okay, you take her, Galloway. Be heading up 280 and start climbing at 800 feet a minute. Level out at 11,000. Yes, sir. All right, Galloway, I'll take her. Give you an idea of what you can do. I'm going into a split S. When we pull out, we'll feel about two and a half G's. Yes, sir. Keep your head on a swivel, Galloway. You can see 99% better than I can straight ahead. I know that, sir. You take her, Galloway. Know all the restricted flight areas over NORAD and Aerospace Defense Command installations? Certainly do, sir. Wow, well, what is that? What's what? Where? Straight ahead. It looks like a flying saucer. Galloway, I don't see a thing. Are you sure you're all right? How can I see it? All right, show me.
saw a UFO and you buzzed restricted areas because you were chasing a UFO. Yes, sir, I did. Although Captain Moran never saw it after searching the area with you and no one on the ground did. I would hope, sir, that there were other witnesses. Well, nobody's aware of any, and uh, wouldn't your instructor be the logical witness to corroborate your story? There is no visibility straight ahead from that instructor's seat. Miss Galloway, we've heard in great detail about this uh, UFO. Would you like to add anything to your version? No. Then I'd like to have you comment on a statement that you made. Pardon me, that you were alleged to have made at last month's meeting of the Aviation Society. What statement was that? That you were uh, sick and tired of the problems women were having getting into the society and that you could fly the pants off any man here and that pretty soon you're going to prove it. Hmm? I'm active in the Air National Guard. On my days off, I uh, instruct a bunch of students who go to Pikes Peak College, fly through their Aviation Society program. It's a darn good one. Men and women? Yeah, about uh, 20 total. Only two girls. As of now, just one too many. Then you don't believe her story? No way, Captain. She must have been a capable pilot, sir. You wouldn't have let her take over the controls. You're absolutely right, Sergeant. Potentially, she was a fine pilot. Technically, she was excellent. Of course, I wouldn't turn over the controls of a plane that I'm responsible for to a dodo. And what do you think she saw? <sighs> not a reflection, not a balloon, nothing meteorological, no hallucination. In short, she didn't see a thing. Then why? Well, look, she's going to a very tough college. And she's working her behind off, I can tell you that. She's on a scholarship, a hardship case. Her father's not living. Captain Moran, report to the flight line, please. I hear you. So there she was. Spring vacation, perfect day for flying. When she got back into the cockpit of that plane, she was like a little kid with a new toy, right? So instead of rapture of the deep, it was rapture of the sky. That's exactly right, Sergeant. All of a sudden, uh, she just wanted to let it all hang out. If you ask me, she just made up that UFO to justify it. Could be good timing. We could get most of our interviews in before the people get back from vacation. Yes, sir. Mighty pretty campus, isn't it, sir? Like Hunter J.C.? How did you know I went to Hunter J.C., sir? Make it a point to find out something about the people I'm working with, Sarge. Miss Galloway? Oh, Captain Ryan? How do you do? This is Sergeant Fitz. How are you, ma'am? Hello. Sit down. Thanks. Thanks for seeing us on such short notice, but we have to drive over to Colorado Springs and touch base with NORAD, and they said 1,500 hours sharp. Oh, you mean NORAD's radar picked up the UFO? No. Even if it is North American Air Defense Command, they don't have radars of any consequence in this particular region. It's simply a question of violation of their restricted airspace. But, uh, well, you wouldn't be coming here so quickly. Both of you. I mean, well, you wouldn't be talking with me if you didn't believe me. Would you? We believe that a relatively qualified observer like you probably saw something. We're trying to determine what. And if it wasn't what you thought you saw, to try to figure out what it really was. I saw a flying saucer for maybe almost three minutes. Mind if we use the tape recorder, ma'am? No, of course not. How close did you get to it? Now, the original report just said that you pursued it and that you tried to bank the plane so that Captain Moran could see it, too. Uh, maybe 200 yards. It, uh, 
It dropped down over that ridge and along that valley. Maybe I got within 100 yards. Captain, we were hitting 150 knots, and I was kind of excited. So I'm not really positive about everything. That close, Miss Galloway? What kind of turbulence did you get from the UFO? Did you get into its vortex? No turbulence. I remember thinking the air should get rough any minute, but it never did. How do you think the UFO was powered? Not by anything I've ever seen. We don't have engines or aircraft that can do anything like it did. It seemed to almost tease us. What do you think it was doing? <laughs> Captain, I've tried to answer that ever since it happened. Observing us? Taking pictures of the only plane in the area? Coming close enough to get scientific readings? You say there was no turbulence in the air when it made that pass along the deck. Did you notice any effect on the vegetation? I didn't notice any wake or anything like that. Uh, I was keeping my eyes on it, after all. The T-34 wasn't affected at any time? And the instrument's all normal? Oh, uh, she flew like a dream. Have you always been interested in UFOs, Miss Galloway? Well, until this, I wasn't any more or any less interested than the next person. Well, thank you very much for your time. May we talk to you again? Oh, any time, Captain. I'll call you right after I see General Whitcomb. Could you do something for us if you have the time? I'll try. I've got lots of time now, just to make up class. Could you draw us some pictures? Diagrams, very simple, of what the craft looked like. I did, that afternoon. Well, after all the flap after we landed, when I went back to my room, I thought while everything was still fresh in my mind, I ought to. I sketched about half a dozen. They're in the dorm now. We'll pick them up when we talk to you later. Fine. Captain Ryan? Are you going to make your findings available to the review board, whatever they turn out to be? No, these go back to Wright-Patterson Foreign Technology Division for evaluation. Oh, good. I thought maybe... I think you ought to know, Miss Galloway, that we will be talking to several of your peers, and I'm sure that one or two of them will be on the board. Your class honor representative, um, Roland Higby, isn't it, ma'am? I don't understand why you have to do that. People who've known you, who can make a judgment about you. <sighs> oh... Higby can make a judgment, all right. Listen, Captain Ryan, I washed out at the Academy, and uh, that was a judgment call. In my opinion, could have gone either way. I've been in hot water a couple of times here at the college, and I'm not the most intelligent in my class. And I admit I'd rather fly than eat. But I did see that UFO right along there. Thank you again, Miss Galloway. <sighs> Mr. Higby. Yes, sir. Captain uh, Ryan. Sergeant Fitz and I are with Blue Book. I think the dean's office informed you we'd like to talk to you. Yes, sir. Uh, is it convenient now? If it is for you. Excuse us, gentlemen. After all, Captain, her record speaks for itself, doesn't it? Well, what we'd like from you is your personal evaluation. Off the record? I'm sorry, Mr. Higby. This will be for background, if you request. It doesn't matter, Captain. I'm sure you know she had to leave the Air Force Academy. We're checking out her background very thoroughly, Mr. Higby. But this interview is for your own personal opinion of her. Well, I just wanted to point out her, let's say, off-center personality. Being good enough to be appointed to the Academy is off-center. Top 10% in the nation. To get to specifics, do you think Miss Galloway has been lying about this experience? Yes, I do. Even though your own board of inquiry has not heard all the evidence in the case. You asked for my personal opinion, and I'm giving it. Yes, she's lying. In my personal opinion. And if the board brings in that verdict, she'll have to leave school. Of course. Thank you very much for talking to us, Mr. Higby. Glad to, Captain. As long as this is for background, 
May I tell you something? You have proved the whole thing's a hoax? No, we can't evaluate until all the evidence is in. I just wanted to say that I think some of your prejudices are showing. In my personal opinion. Okay. Hi. How are you? I heard about your hassle. Then you know. When were you here? A few days, they said. Everything's going to be okay. I have a good feeling. All I can say, the vibes aren't too good. But I'm certainly going to fight to stay in here. Now. <laughs> Great timing, huh? My day for flight check and a UFO has to show up. Hey, I believe you. Thanks. What'd you do during vacation? Did you get that backpacking in? Oh, yes. All alone. Weather was great. Mm. Have to get you hiking this summer. Hey, listen, Kay. Everything's gonna be all right. Higby may think he runs his student body, but he can't win them all. Oh, that's just part of it, Doug. Even if I beat this one, it's on my flying record. I mean, people think that anyone who's seen a UFO is automatically a wacko. I really want to get my commercial license, but if I hallucinated in the air, boy, I've got psychological problems. I'm late for lab. Okay. Hang in there, huh? Yeah. I'll hang in there. Bye-bye. Final radar reports are all negative, Colonel. There's no confirmation by any aircraft in the area. Very improbable it could be a weather or research balloon or meteorological phenomena. No, sir. Well, she drew five. Very detailed. I put them on the transmitter. The only unusual feature is some kind of uh, bulge or bump on the perimeter. Fine, sir. I'll call you tomorrow. Goodbye. Final batch of the aerial photos, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. Anything? Besides the shots of the three humanoids looking outside of the cave? Three shoot. <clears throat> Going to set up a ground search, Captain? Think there's any reason to? Not from anything I've spotted yet. Sergeant. This bulge, whatever it is she drew on this thing. Ring any bells? I don't recall anything just like that in any of the cases I've been on, sir, or read about. Me either. When do we see her tomorrow? After her last class, 15.30 hours, sir. That's good coffee. Thanks, Sergeant. It's all in the recipe, sir. Freshly brewed, one small sugar, one ounce of milk always. Butter for the Dewadnam. Captain Ryan, yes? No, obviously this isn't something to talk about on the telephone. Um, where can I meet you? Captain Ryan? Hi. Hi, I'm Doug Detweiler. How are you, Doug? I'm glad you could come. Oh, no, glad to. It uh, sounded important. Boy, these uh, thunderstorms really come up out of nowhere, don't they? Yeah, yeah, I've uh, had to fly around a few of my time up here. Captain Ryan, this is going to sound awfully far out, I guess. Uh, and I don't know what you guys can make of all the information, but, uh... Doug, why don't you just start from the beginning? I should have said something when I got back from vacation. But the first thing I heard was everyone saying that she'd be asked to leave school, uh, that she had hallucinations, so I waited. Then I realized the longer I waited, the worse it would look, as if I was coming forward just to lie for her, especially since we're friends. Well, actually, we're good friends. Kay is... Really the first serious girl that, uh... Doug, what are you trying to say? A vacation. Uh, I didn't go home this year. Uh, I knew it'd be my last chance to go backpacking for a long time.
I really don't know how long it was there. Uh, five minutes, 15. Uh, but I do know it was there, Captain, even if I didn't get any pictures. I realize all you've got is my word. So you're worried if you tell the board all this that you'll be in the same jeopardy she's in, lack of psychological fitness. I know I will. And well, that's okay. I'll take my chances. The worst part of it is, when I do come forward, the guys on the board will just assume that I'm lying for. Where does that leave us? I mean, where does that leave Kay? I can't say. I know where it leaves me. Where's that? With a lot of investigating to do. Some rain we had last night, but it sure didn't do much damage up here. Oh, looks like we got a washout. It's the end of the line. Interesting drawings you made for us. Oh, are they like hers? Oh, did she tell you she made some? No, I uh, just figured if you asked me, you asked her. Are they like hers? Not exactly. How long have you known Miss Galloway? Oh, we went to high school together. And then she got admitted to the academy and washed out after three years. And she came back here as a junior, and we sort of picked up where we left off. Only a little more friendly. How did she describe the UFO to you? Uh, she never did, really. You must have talked to her about the sighting. No, not really. By the time I got back from vacation, she was up to here with the whole thing, and uh, she just didn't want to talk about it. And I felt kind of funny, too, with the whole situation. The reprimand by the board. Uh, she'd really been put through a ringer. And if she's found unfit for further pilot training, I don't know. She's got her heart set on going into commercial aviation as a woman pilot. When does the board bring in its decision, do you know? <sighs> now that I've asked to testify, uh, it's going to stretch things out. I don't know. Well, let's go. It's about a half a mile up the canyon. Sorry, it's so primitive. Mr. Deltweiler, I don't know why it is. 
but I've never been lucky enough to investigate a UFO that landed on the penthouse terrace. Like I said about those penthouse landings, they all seem to want to land in this kind of country. just developed me a whole new respect for those Canadian log rolls. Here, Sergeant, let me give you a hand. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. I needed that. Captain, I have no idea what material it was made out of, how heavy the metal was, how light, or even if it was metal. Any ordinary aircraft that size would have to weigh tons, I guess. Penetrometer can give us a pretty good idea of how firm the ground's been compressed. Well, I set up camp by a little pond, and when I was filling up my canteen... Right there. It landed right there. Looks like last night's rain flooded the area. Look, my, look, my towel's still in the tree. You believe me, don't you? Mr. Deadweiler, nobody can prove you didn't see something. But I don't know any way now to prove that you did. Why did you wait so long to come forward, Mr. Detweiler? I made a mistake. Her sighting was the main topic of conversation the minute I got in. And the rumor was strong that she would be asked to leave college. So you've had plenty of time to learn what her description of the UFO was. Is that how you can describe what you allegedly saw the same way? I didn't allegedly see anything. I saw the UFO, which I described, up by Terriol Creek. Any further questions, gentlemen? This honor board does not have the power to compel a student to resign. However, we are sending a unanimous recommendation to the Dean of Students that both of you be asked to withdraw from Pikes Peak College. I want to know exactly what rights I have to appeal. Both of you will be informed of all of your legal rights and options and the several types of separation from this institution. This honor board is now adjourned. Captain, I'm the first to admit that UFOs isn't my field of study, but I see significant differences in their two sets of drawings. Well, there are differences, sir, but we don't think they're significant. It's the similarities that we found to be remarkable. And, sir, that probe, that appendage, is not in most of the classic UFO sightings. Well, don't they both describe its color quite differently? Perceptions. Sir, she saw it air to air. Detweiler saw it ground to air. And we've learned to be very suspicious when different witnesses do agree on small details as if it's rehearsed. You know, I feel very ambivalent about the whole case. I'm very grateful for you letting me see everything that you found. But there's one point in her story I just can't buy, Captain. Now, Kay Galloway says that she saw the UFO right over this area. A whole military communications complex 
and yet not one person on the ground saw it. You told me yourself, sir, that you went to the window when you heard the buzzing. And I didn't see the UFO either. What were you looking at? I wondered what dumbbell was flying so low, I wanted to identify the plane. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean, Captain. See, I think it's natural for anybody to look up at the sound of the plane, and as you say, sir, try to get that plane's ID. Strictly off the record. Now, what do you think really happened? Sir, on the record right now, but subject to change. Both of these sightings are considered to be unknowns. Miss Galloway, Mr. Detweiler. I don't want to drag this proceeding out any further than it's already gone. I know you've both lived with it for three long weeks. And I also realize that most students naturally assume that if you're brought up on charges, you're guilty until proven innocent. I've always tried to give anyone the benefit of reasonable doubt. Therefore, I do not accept the recommendation of the Honor Board. You are both to remain in good standing, your scholarship grants in force, and all charges dismissed. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. With one consideration. What's that, sir? When you have a little time, I'd like you both to tell me personally what it was like. Okay, Doug, we just stopped by to say so long. We're back to right Cap tomorrow. Oh, we can never thank you enough, Captain Ryan. Sergeant Fitz, you know, if it weren't for you two, nobody would have thought that there was really a flying saucer. Oh, we never said there was. All I know is that Sergeant Fitz and I are going to consider it, or them, an unknown. Well, thank you sincerely, whatever it is officially. Bye now. Take care. How about a walk around the block? Talk me into it. <laughs> How could anybody who hasn't seen one understand? I may not have gotten any pictures, but there were plenty of pictures being taken. By whom? By them. mentioned that. I did tell Captain Ryan. Nobody else asked. Okay, I thought, why not leave well enough alone? Welcome back, Captain Ryan. It's good to be back, Miss Verdon. Everything under control? 
Lots of paperwork, sir. I've tried to collate it on your desk. How you doing, Harry? Another day in the Air Force, another 2,000 miles. Fresh, sir. Nice blouse. Sergeant Fitz. Yes, sir. Some of this requires our immediate attention. Fine, sir. Starting with this. The promotion came through. Congratulations, Tech Sergeant. Well, sir. Thank you, sir. You earned it, Sergeant. Remember that. Indeed, I will. How's the coffee, sir? I know Libby's really trying. Right on the button. I was wondering, sir, how do you know so much about coffee? I'm a close friend of Juan Valdez. Juan Valdez, he's that fellow on the TV commercials that grows coffee down in South America and picks the beans and... Yes, Harry, I know. Well, sure you do. Tell from Matt that he's got a real sense of humor. And he's changed. Like I said, a regular pussycat, Libby. A pussycat. Morning. Morning, Captain. Morning, Sergeant. Morning, Captain. Sound like Captain Kangaroo. Aren't you about due for a haircut? Yeah. 